Marvel. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe what up family it's your boy Khalil YL hey I wanted to drop this quick video uh, talking about uh, the racism and uh, agendas that are uh, put put in our cartoons put in children's cartoons to uh, lead us to the destruction uh, that we that we see today you know uh, the division uh, the chaos uh, you know, it's like every man for themselves, which is definitely not how this uh, world was designed to be. That's not what the creator intended. Um, this world, uh, it, it love makes the world go around. That's what keeps everything going. If you look at nature, you look at the animals, um, love makes the world go, go around. Um, so with that being said, uh, what I started to notice maybe about five years ago uh, when I first started my, my spiritual journey, or I guess what I should say, I guess I've always been on the journey, but I, I should say when I really, really start to wake up and, and notice things going around me. But I started to notice uh, as I would go back and look at old cartoons that I watched when I was growing up, I would notice, uh, you know, really significant um, uh, triggers, subconscious triggers, uh, you know. And it's funny because it makes you think like when you're growing up, your parents say, don't do this, don't do that. And I just come to realize uh that the one thing that they trusted us with and thought we were okay to do, uh, well, there are many things, but cartoons were one of the worst things uh, our parents could have put us in front of. Um, the worst thing, cartoons, children's books, are some of the worst things our parents could have presented to us without direction. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if you're, if you know what you're looking at, that way you can unwrap it and um, protect your subconscious mind so you don't act it out in the future or doesn't become a part of your fabric, uh, then that's fine. But typically our parents didn't know any better. So here we are. So this one small example. Um, so I was looking through, you know, some of my old boxes and I still have a lot of my uh, GI Joes from uh, the eighties. So upon looking for them, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm looking at them like, Oh, there's the Baroness. Oh, there's a, Told Max and Zaymon, oh, yeah. So I'm like, man, you know, I got to get back to collecting them, you know. And uh, I mean, because, you know, it was my happy place, right? My happy time, my childhood. I was like, I have to get back to collecting them. But I was like, but you know what? First one, I have to get Snake Eyes. Got to get Snake Eyes, right? Because if you know Snake Eyes, um, out of all the G.I. Joes, Snake Eyes was the one that no one could deal with. Like, one on one. He was like the badass of the G.I. Joes, right? But there was one G.I. Joe that in the mano a mano fight, he could, you know, he could beat or hold his own with Snake Eyes from time to time. And this was Storm Shadow. So ironically, but I know, not surprising, I know you, know you guys won't be surprised, um, Snake Eyes was all black, right? And Storm Shadow was all white. So, of course, as I'm thinking about, hey, I need to get a Storm, I need to get another Snake Eyes, so of course I can get a Storm Shadow. This hits me like, wow, okay, so there we go. Black, they, they're pinning black against white. They're teaching us that, you know, at an early age. I mean, I, obviously on every level. But when I was a kid, I didn't notice this, right? So, and obviously it was feeding my subconscious, right? Um, and there's no telling how it affected me. It's no telling how. I mean, I can say that uh, I see everybody the same and I never felt any kind of way about, uh, quote unquote, white people. But based on what I'm being taught and reinforced, I mean, there's no telling uh, how that impacted me, you know? So uh, to take it further, so Snake Eyes is all black, Storm Shadow is all white, right? Uh, so good against evil, right? Uh, but but here but here's the caveat to it. So and I think it's a little some a little there's a little something deeper going on with this. So this is something I'm definitely gonna have to dig into because I, I haven't had a chance to meditate on it or look further into it uh, to see what, what's really going on. But just off the top, um, that's what I noticed. And also what I noticed was uh, Snake Eyes is blind. So if you know. Uh, how the powers that be, the ones that runs the media and movies, et cetera, not only do they, um, you know, put little signifiers out there and symbolism out there and like kind of throw it in your face because they're, they're egotistical. So they have to kind of, I mean, think about it. Anyone who, you know, comes to a place and just decides that, you know, they, they're just going to kill whatever, uh, duplicate whatever, uh, you know, uh, add, um, unnatural elements, you know, to the food and, you know, and poison the water. I mean, you know, anyone who has the the audacity 
or the or the balls to do something like that, um, they have to be very egotistical. So what one of the things they do, they'll you know do other little things to kind of you know kind of like a slap in your face. So Snake Eyes is blind. So what I got from that was, are they saying uh, black people are asleep consciously? Are they saying saying that uh, the Snake Eyes being blind represent uh, black people? Uh, being blind to, in other words, to what's going on around them. Um, I mean, because generally speaking, that's true. Um, well, I mean, of course, now with the uh, technology, internet, and stuff like that, um, the whole world is starting to see truth. But you know, obviously, before that, everything was really, really hidden. Uh, so that would be apropos. Or is it saying, "Hey, uh, black people, black folk." Open your eyes. You are great. You are wonderful. You are magnificent. I mean, what are you doing? Wake up. Open your eyes. You know, well, maybe it's, it, maybe the person, the writer or the creator of uh, Snake Eyes is saying that. But um, obviously, I would have to, have to know the uh, the background and history of the uh, the actual creator of Snake Eyes to kind of get my insight on what I believe uh, the intent was. And also, Storm Shadow. Uh, wears the logo of the serpent on his chest. Um, so if you know a little bit about the serpent and, and what it and what it represents uh, spiritually as far as with history, uh, then you know that that's that's it's pretty deep and there's something you know a little deeper going on here. So Storm Shadow wears White Ninja, wears the serpent on his chest, on his uniform, and also represents evil, and also represents uh, Cobra, you know, who is uh, opposition to G.I. Joe. And then on the flip side, you know, you have Snake Eyes, who represent uh, G.I. Joe, which is the good side, and uh, is blind, uh, like I, I said earlier. Um, so that, that's just pretty interesting. That's just pretty interesting. But but another thing that's deep about them, they have like this uh, this deep deep uh, connection. Um, and I'm not gonna go off into that because that's just gonna you know take this this audio another ten minutes. But they have a real real deep deep connection. So uh, and, and people who are into GI Joe, they they understand that. So but what's that really about? So uh, that's definitely something I need to really dig in at a later date. But I just thought I would throw that out there to you. And maybe you can give me some info on that or some light on that. Um, uh, but other than that, uh, that's all I got for you. I just wanted to share that that quick thought. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and keep it moving. So anyway, once again, uh, thanks for uh, checking me out. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And, uh, and also, hey, you got any uh, info on... Um, Storm Shadow, Snake Eyes, then uh, you know, uh, you know, let me know. You know, let's uh, let's kick it and let's learn and grow together. All right, y'all, y'all have a good day. It's your boy Khalil YL. I'm out of here. Peace.